What is your first thought about someone when they have a Confederate flag sticker on their car? That it is a weird thing to do here in Germany. As an Australian I am often confused because there really are fucktard Aussies who do this. Little anecdote. In the 90s, NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt put a Southern Pride sticker on his personal pickup which had a Confederate flag in its design. When one of his employees, an African-American woman, saw it, she told him it made her uncomfortable. His reaction? He immediately apologized, looked for a razor blade and scraped it off his truck. I loathe seeing it in my home state of MN. The 1st Minnesota Infantry Regiment had an 82% casualty rate in Gettysburg. What a fucking idiot. Do not engage. What is the biggest unsolved mystery in human history? We like to think we understand the universe and that physics is a well-grounded discipline. And in some ways it is. However, we have no idea what dark matter or dark energy is and yet we think it makes up 27% and 68% of the universe respectively. An active one in the archaeology world is the exact time frame of when humans made it to the Americas. The date keeps getting pushed back with more controversial discoveries that then just turn to evidence as they pile up. It's a fascinating story to see unfold. So the monarch butterfly migrates to Mexico and back every year. During the year there are a full four generations of butterflies that live and die during the journey. Upon returning back from Mexico, the butterfly manages to find the same trees its relative started out at despite never having been there. In Australia, in 2011, someone broke into a TV station and spent four hours flushing $100,000 down the toilet. The final words of the Emperor Titus were, I have but one regret. We don't know and never will what that regret was. Edit. On reflection it's even better. I have made but one mistake. Supreme confidence. That most of human history is undocumented and we will never know our entire history as a species. We didn't start recording our history until 5000 BCE. We do know we shifted to agrarian societies around 10,000 BCE but beyond that we have no idea what we were like as a species. We will never know the undocumented parts of our history that spans tens of thousands of years. We are often baffled by the technological progress of our ancient ancestors. Like those in SE Asia who must have been masters of the sea to have colonized the variety of islands there and sailed vast stretches of ocean to land on Australia and New Zealand. What is ironic is we currently have an immense amount of information about our world today and the limited documented history of our early days as a species but that is only a small fraction of our entire history. What celebrity murdered their career best? Charlie Sheen. He was making $2 million per episode playing himself on Two and a Half Men. Then he went off the rails by insulting the creator and talking about winning and tiger blood. Gary Glitter, 70s UK glam rock star faded into obscurity. The thing was it was at the time when his peers were having a resurgence. He would have been successful again until he took his laptop into repair and the shop reported to the police all of the child porn on it. O.J. Simpson went from being a beloved running back and actor to a pariah. He may have gotten away with murder, but he'll live the rest of his life as a figure of ridicule. Michael Barrymore did a pretty good job of killing his career in the UK. Beloved light entertainer who performed for the royal family and commanded large audiences on Prime Time TV. He came out as gay and admitted his marriage was a sham and people loved him for being able to open up and be honest about it. Then he held a drink and drugs fueled party at his mansion where a man was found dead in his swimming pool with serious anal injuries. And that was the end of Barrymore's career.
There was this British cooking star and food critic on the BBC called Fanny Craddock who torpedoed her career as a host for the BBC in the 1970s while fucking up another cook's big event. Said cook was a Gwen Troke, a farmer's housewife who had won a big cooking competition held by the BBC called Cook of the Realm with the main prize being the opportunity to cook a banquet for a number of notable people, including Edward Heath, former Prime Minister, and Earl Mountbatten. This was documented in a series called The Big Time in Craddock and a number of other famous chefs were brought in to help advise Troke in how to build the menu for the banquet. When Craddock read the menu as selected by Troke, she reacted very negatively by saying that the selection was too rich and when Troke explained that she chose her selection because she wanted to go for an English selection, scornfully said that England doesn't have its own cuisine, and claiming that even the famous Yorkshire pudding was taken from the French. Embarrassingly, she claimed to have no idea what bramble sauce was. It's the condiment meant to go with the duckling troke wanted to serve which is made from red wine, beef stock and blackberries. In particular, she forced Troke to get rid of her original selected dessert of coffee cream pudding with Craddock's own selection of pastry boat served with fruit sorbet and decorated with spun sugar, orange slice and a cherry on a cocktail stick to also change the theme of the banquet to a naval theme. Since some of the guests had naval backgrounds, when the banquet was underway, the desserts were a full-on fucking disaster as they failed to set properly. When fellow consultant chef Robert Morley learned about Craddock's forced change, he was greatly annoyed with her because her dessert involved cooking techniques that amateur cook. Troke didn't know as they needed high-end culinary skills. The public turned against Craddock because she effectively ruined Troke's special big day due to her haughtiness and know-nothing know-it-all attitude, which wasn't helped by the additional detail that Craddock had moved to Ireland and given up her native British citizenship to cheat her way out of paying her taxes. While she publicly apologized, the BBC cancelled her contract two weeks after the airing of The Big Time. She was still a guest on a number of talk shows until her fatal stroke in the 90s but she would never host a show again. Aaron Hernandez If you woke up one day and you were 40. No career. No savings. No degree. No real skills and a decent amount of debt and had to make it at that age. What would you do? I'd be thankful I was 10 years younger. That was pretty much me. I was a stay-at-home mom while raising my children. I got divorced in my 40s. No work history for about 15 years. Didn't know anything about computers. We'd been living in a rented house and the car I drove was leased. I was also left with full care of our four children and about $40,000 in credit card debt. I went back to school and got a paralegal certificate. I turned in the leased car and bought an older car with more than 80,000 miles already on it. I went to a temporary agency and they taught me enough computer basics to get some jobs. I was an excellent typist which helped. I started working full-time as a bankruptcy associate but the company moved far enough that I had almost three hours of commuting each day. So when I saw an ad for a deputy court administrator about 10 miles from me, I applied and got the job. Five years later I became a court administrator. I moved to a bigger court with a 33% increase in salary. In the meantime, I'd bought my own house and met and married a wonderful man. I retired two years ago after the better part of 20 years in the court system at a salary of $75,000. I never thought I'd get so far or accomplish so much. An edit for the doubters. I got divorced in 1997. At the time my children were nine. 12, 15 and 18, old enough for me to be able to leave them for night classes. It was in 1995 that I started taking classes. I think it was 1998 that I got a paralegal certificate. 
I continued into an associate's degree but that took considerably longer. I think it was around 2004 when I finished. As for how did I afford it? My marriage ended with an episode of domestic violence which is what spurred me on to change my life. My ex-husband moved out in 2005. Our divorce was finalized in 1997. There was a local program I found affiliated with our community college that was geared to people who found themselves, whether by divorce, illness, disability, etc., needing to earn an income. It was called Transitions. I enrolled and took a free career test. There were a number of possibilities but the paralegal program worked for me because it could be completed in a relatively short period of time. Most of the time I took two classes at a time since I was working during the day. First part-time and then full-time. And let's not forget about those four kids. Anyway through transitions I also qualified for a grant that not only covered school expenses, but usually had a little left at the end of each semester. One commenter questioned my age. They decided I must be at least 60 and wanted to know why I was on Reddit. I didn't know there was an upper age limit. As a matter of fact, I turn 72 next month. If that somehow offends people, that's your problem, not mine. I respond more often than I post but I always respond honestly. None of it was easy. One semester I was so worn down that one night I came home from night classes after working all day. I went in my bedroom to get dressed for bed. My middle daughter came down the hall to find me kneeling at the side of my bed. Head on the bed. Totally naked and sound asleep. I went to my doctor and got a medical note to drop all my classes that semester. I am proud of what I accomplished and my kids have all told me they were proud of me too. I'm giving further details after reading some comments. But keep in mind I'm summarizing about 25 years of my life. Again. Looking back, I don't really know how I got through but I did. And I'm happily remarried. My ex was engaged before the divorce and has never really been happy. I don't mind that at all. I feel attacked in this post. Well gee that sounds like my current situation. I guess have a glass of wine and go to sleep. Go ahead and see if you can get yourself certified in something technical from a trade school or even university if they have cert courses separate from the degreed curriculum. Electrician, plumber etc. Oftentimes trade certification is much cheaper than degrees. Several hundred to low thousands for example. One of my old buddies became certified in a CAD program. Computer-aided design. At a university. He used it to get a job at a major aircraft company for $60,000 per year. Guess what? He was 45 when he did it. And was released from prison only two years prior for a bunch of bad stuff he did when he was younger. So that dude had a steep uphill climb. You got this bud. Go get him clenched fist. Subscribe my brothers.